Good afternoon. Welcome to Borough Hall. My name is Abe Friedman. I serve as the director for Brooklyn Borough President, the Honorable Eric Adams. We are exceptional, delighted to host you today in Borough Hall as we honor all community affairs officers at this special day. I would like to call upon police officer Tanya Salters to please give us the national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early lights what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red Thank you, Police Officer Salters. Please remain standing as I call up the NYPD Chief Chaplain, Rabbi Dr. Alvin Kass. Ladies and gentlemen, a Sunday school teacher asked the members of her class, how many of you want to go to heaven? Everyone raised a hand except one little boy. Then she asked, how many of you want to go to the other place? No one raised a hand. She turned to the little boy who hadn't raised his hand in response to either of the questions, and she said, what's the matter, Jackie? Don't you want to go anywhere? And he said, no, I like it right here. <laughs> All of us who are in this room, and most of the people in Brooklyn and in the city of New York would say exactly the same thing, and the reason is very clear, the New York City Police Department and the heart and soul of the NYPD are surely our community affairs officers. They know what's going on in the local community. They are cognizant of the astounding diversity of this metropolis. And no one knows that truth more brilliantly than Commissioner Bratton. I was very much moved by a message that Commissioner Bratton sent out over the weekend urging all of us in the department to offer whatever consideration we could to the officers of Nepalese origin whose families are affected by the earthquake that recently occurred in that part of the world. In what other police department in the United States, I ask you, would such a message be appropriate? Where else but in the city of New York do you have more Jews than you have in Jerusalem, more Greeks than you have in Athens, and more Irish than you have in Dublin, and for all I know, more Nepalese natives than you have in Kathmandu. In any event, to understand the needs of all of these diverse communities, you need these community affairs officers who spend their lives mastering all of the complexities of life on the local scene. We're so grateful to them. We're grateful to Eric Adams, our borough president, for convening us all to honor them. 
He himself is a product of this department. He knows the importance of this department, and he personally has made such a great contribution to its history. We pray that God will bless all the members of the NYPD under the leadership of Commissioner Bratton and with the guidance of Eric Adams and together with our community affairs officers with the capacity to keep this alabaster city gleaming undimmed by human tears. And may God shed his grace upon the United States of America, the greatest country on the face of the earth, and crown our good with brotherhood and sisterhood from sea to shining sea. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to begin with introducing our dais to my far right, Chief Frank Vega, Community Affairs Bureau, representing Chief Jaffe. <laughs> NYPD Chief Chaplain Rabbi Dr. Alvin Cass. <laughs> Brooklyn Borough President the Honorable Eric Adams. <laughs> NYPD Police Commissioner the Honorable William Bratton. Patrol Borough Brooklyn South, Commanding Officer Steve Powers. <laughs> Patrol Borough Brooklyn North, Commanding Officer Jeffrey Madry. <laughs> Executive Officer, Patrol Borough Brooklyn South, Chuck Shaw. <laughs> I would like to now call upon the Deputy Borough President, Diane Reyna, to address the crowd. Good afternoon. I feel very safe in this room. I wanted to just welcome everyone here today. You are very special individuals in the lives of so many. I served in the city council for 12 years, but my very first engagement with police was always with our community affairs officer. And so many of you I've had the privilege of being able to connect with. People who have retired that I still hold dear to my heart. Being able to have that line of communication is almost a life-saving moment when you need them the most in the middle of the night trying to deal with a family who has received bad news of their son who perhaps made a bad choice and being able to connect with a police officer to be able to say, we need to do better. Can we help this family understand that there's options and we can certainly connect them to resources. It is examples like that where our community affairs officers are the livelihood of what is the connection between community and police, one police plaza. And I take my hat off to each and every one of you. This is a great opportunity for us to just take a moment to say thank you. And to each and every one of you who has stood by the side of so many families and organizations trying to be that connector. It is people like yourselves that make everything that much more worthwhile. I know we have precinct council uh, representation here from all walks of life and I just wanted to express on behalf of community how much we appreciate our community affairs officer. It is important today more so than ever before when I would hear that calling from community of that beat officer. You are that beat officer for many communities and you have not lost the concept of what it is to be a beat officer. And I know that the commissioner is here present um, and special assignment is something that is very unique and I hope that we can reward you through special assignments. It is something bold to be asking of you, Commissioner. Um, but these are the bread and butter to our community as far as officers who give of their time, day and night, leave their families, and have those extra hours. Um, these are the individual officers who continue to be there in many special ways. Um, they probably know more so about families in our community than we know as elected officials. And on behalf of Eric L. Adams, our borough president, 
um, an officer himself and always true to the heart of being and wearing that uniform in blue. Um, he represents what is public service till this day, and it is an honor to be the deputy walking by his side to be able to honor you here today. Thank you for your service, and may God bless you and grant you safety every day. Thank you, Deputy Borough President. I would like to call upon now the senior advisor to the Borough President, Ingrid Lewis Martin. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is indeed an honor for me to be here today to congratulate each and every one of you. The Borough President and I have a very long history together. Prior to him becoming an elected official, as you well know, he was a member of NYPD. He and my husband attended the police academy together and became transit cops together. So for me to stand before you to say thank you for putting your lives on the line every single day, to say thank you for knowing that without you, New York City would be lost to thank you for taking all of the negative criticism and the pitfalls that you receive on a daily basis without people recognizing you for the great and stellar work that you do. The community service officer, in my humble opinion, is the heart and soul of NYPD. Without you, many residents in our community would be without hope. When I served as a chief of staff to the senator, who is now our borough president, many a nights I was on the phone with officers from the 71st Precinct who were in Community Affairs, the 70th Precinct who were in Community Affairs, the 75th Precinct, all hours of the night. No hour was too early, no hour was too late. Whatever you as an officer could do to help people in our city, you were there. So on behalf of our borough president, Eric L. Adams, on behalf of all of the residents of New York City, particularly the residents of Brooklyn who were not here, but I know who would be here and happily. I say thank you. It is indeed a pleasure and an honor, and I commend you, and I wish you blessings and a safe tour. Thank you. The speaker is running a little bit behind. Oh, okay. Please welcome our uh, New York City Council Speaker, Melissa Marco Burrito. I will now ask our Brooklyn Borough President, as we know, who served as a officer, sergeant, lieutenant, and captain and the NYPD who always on a day to day respects the officers, especially community affairs. When it comes in time of crisis, when it comes to saying the bad news or good news, community affairs officers are our upfront. And that's why the borough president felt the urgency to recognize community affairs officers for their hard work every day. Without further ado, I would ask the borough president to please say a few words. Thanks so much, Abe. Uh, and just to connect some of the faces uh, that are part of our team here that interact with our law enforcement, uh, we also have Joel's, Joel Eisdorfer, who's in Brooklyn South, uh, uh, Rabbi uh, Joel Freeman, uh, and uh, my two Brooklyn North and Brooklyn South rep, Nan Blackshares in the rear, and Steve Zelzer over to, to the right. Uh, let me say this, uh, I cannot thank um, both the police commissioner and uh, the speaker uh, for really carving out time in their day to 
uh, come and just be in a room with the men and women who are part of, of the community affairs. Uh, a very uh, important aspect of policing and some of the faces I see here um, that I've known for many years. And the first thing we do here in Borough Hall and even when we were in the Senate, when we would go to a scene where there's an incident, I always tell my staff, look for the community affairs officers. Speak with them, find out what's taking place, and the level of professionalism um, that you bring is, uh, is just awesome. And I am surrounded by the spouses of ex-cops. Lori Lewis, husband Marvin Lewis, <laughs> who's sitting here, uh, Diana Reyna, husband, is a sergeant in the police department, and as Ingrid stated, Commissioner, her husband and I came through the police academy uh, together. And so I have a history of being around the spouses of ex-cops. Um, I may have walked the beat in the beginning part of my years with their husband, but they're here to make sure the beat of Brooklyn continues to be a very productive one. Numbers do not lie. Uh, it did not take the Daily News to tell us how well we were doing and how well we are doing in Brooklyn. Uh, the numbers don't lie, 11.7 percent decrease in uh, shootings, 15.7 percent decrease in victims. Many people see those numbers are, as just stats, but those numbers are lives. Those are the numbers that our uniform shirts no longer would be drenched in tears from parents who see their loved ones prematurely taken from us. That is an awesome number for us to embrace. As the commissioner and I were talking in the room before walking in, when you look at the numbers that we are comparing to already low numbers, you really have to commend the job that we have done as members of the New York City Police Department. And people question, they questioned our uh, methods of policing, that would the numbers continue to decline. And there was never a time that there was a level of uncertainty when the commissioner was announced as the new commissioner, that I knew that we were going to continue to have substantial decreases in crimes. Uh, this was the commissioner who started the decrease under the now uh, uh, good friend uh, Jack Maple, who's no longer with us, made the transition from the physical to the spiritual, but a pioneer around public safety and saving lives. And then we were blessed that after having two great commanders of Brooklyn, Brooklyn North and Brooklyn South uh, leave us and retire, we were afforded the opportunity to have two great uh, commanders that joined us, uh, Chief Powers, and Chief Madry. Thank you very much, Commissioner, for having both of them here with us. Two things I want to say before um, bringing up uh, my good friend, the Speaker. Uh, one is that there's a consistency to police it. It doesn't matter who's the mayor. It doesn't matter who's the borough president. It doesn't matter who's the president of the United States. Great law enforcement officers are able to remove themselves from the political climate and just ensure they create the right climate. That is where we have been. No matter what the policies were, no matter how challenging they may have been, no matter how often the job of policing is a thankless job, there's been a level of consistency and how we police the city. And I know there are days that we've all experienced, I experienced it while I wore the blue uniform, that you believe people are ungrateful for what we do. But they're not. The numerical minority that exists in this city and create chaos is not part of the nu numerical majority that is happy to see you every day. Countless number of people when they see members from the police department on their block, on their corner, or just responding to them, it is impactful. And that transition to me, the next thing I want to say to you. You cannot imagine what it means to people 
when a person in a police uniform interacts with them in a positive way. When you say good morning, when you shake a hand, when you ask them how are their son or daughter is doing in school, when you say to them, I heard that a family member had a surgery, I hope they're all right. They think about that for the entire day. Just as they think about negative encounters that they experience in their lives, no one can change the dynamics of a day better than a police officer. If you stand on the corner and greet someone while they're entering the transportation system to go to and from their place of employment, they remember that every day. People stop in my office every day and talk about the positive experiences they have with police officers. Something as simple as he said hello. I am amazed sometimes when I walk past an officer on the corner and I say, good morning, officer. He looks at me like, can he respond back? Creating that environment is something of the past. The environment we want to create is that police officers are extensions of our communities and our families, and that is the police department that we are building in the city of New York. Many people didn't know when we lost two officers due to an assassination, officers from Brooklyn North were doing a toy drive and giving out toys to young people. They didn't stop. Even though they were mourning the loss of their colleague, they still went and gave those children toys because they didn't want to see their Christmas destroyed. That's the fortitude and the attitude that is part of the trademark of the New York City Police Department. And no one does it better than the community affairs officer. And I joined the call, as my deputy stated, that I hope all of you will have one day a shield on your chest. Because what you do is awesome, and it's an awesome responsibility to be there and deal with difficult and challenging situations and de-escalate the attitudes of many people who are frightened, unsure, concerned, and don't know how to speak on behalf of themselves. And we need to reward you. If the energy is the best among us are those not only who can use a nice stick or a nine millimeter, but who can use their heart, then no one does it better than the men and women of the Community Affairs Unit. And I want to be a part of acknowledging you for what you do. You have made my life as a state senator an extremely easy job. I call you, as Ingrid stated, we have called many of you late into the night and asked you to assist us with a problem that we, we are having. And you've never turned your back and said no. Never. And we want to acknowledge your presence. And as I move through, uh, my years here in Borough Hall, I want people to know how much I appreciate the men and women of the community affairs. There's a lot of conversation in the tabloids talking about how we're going to issue summonses and talking about the concepts of summonses. One thing both the speaker who joined the commissioner in calling for the increase in the number of police officers, they both have in common is public safety. Don't get it mixed up. Our speak of the city council is clearly behind the men and women of the police department and she believed the importance of ensuring public safety. She led the call for bulletproof vests. She's leading the council in the direction of ensuring we have more officers um, on our streets as she goes through this difficult budgetary uh, cycle. Don't let the tabloids give you the misimpression of the direction our speaker is moving this city. Public safety is the prerequisite of prosperity. You cannot prosper in the city if you don't have a safe city. And many conversations the speaker and I had clearly shows how important it is to have safety in the city of New York. So I thank you for what you do. I thank you for being here. And I thank you for what you have done for the people of the city of New York. We're moving in the right direction that people will understand and appreciate the men and women of the New York City Police Department. I want to now ask the speaker of the city council to come forward and say a few words. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. 
Buenas tardes. Um, I want to thank the borough president for, for his words uh, right now. Obviously, um, this is something that's very personal to him. This is his world, right? And you can feel the passion and the inspiration um, that comes from his words. And so I want to really thank him for inviting me here today to be part of this ceremony in which we recognize all of you in the work that you do here in Brooklyn on behalf of the NYPD and on behalf of the city of New York. It's uh, great to be here with our commissioner, Bratton. Uh, we've developed an incredible relationship that is very open, is very honest. He has an open door policy, very engaged and welcoming of us as a city council in the conversation about how we move forward as a city. And uh, our relationship will not be defined by what the press says. Our relationship is one that is direct uh, and honest and personal. And I want to thank him for his efforts on behalf of the city of New York. And um, I see one of, of my good friends here, Deputy Inspector Caban is here, uh, who used to be the commanding officer of the 2-3 in my district. So we had gotten to know each other over the years. So it's great to see you here as well. Um, you know, I really want to just add my words of, of, of praise and appreciation to all of you for the work that you do in our communities. And as I said, you know, for this city to prosper, we need safety and security in our city. And that is, in large part, that safety and security that we have in the city, thanks to all of you on behalf of our communities and, and our borough. So we really do want to take the moment to show that appreciation through achievement uh, recognition ceremonies such as this one. And you cl clearly are on the front lines uh, from the Community Affairs Division. I know the important role that it plays in my district in particular, uh, representing about five precincts. And so it really is critical that we do that and take the moment to do that. Um, and whether you're responding to an emergency or presenting at a community board in the field, and we know that we interact with you each and every day, not only at the community board level, but at different community meetings that are so vital uh, to the vitality of our communities, uh, your faces are the ones that we see each and every day, and it's the faces that we come to know in our communities that we expect um, to, to work with us and that we appreciate. So uh, thank you for that. And so that, that is the reason we're here today. And that is the reason why the City Council stands on behalf of the NYPD. And we know that supporting the NYPD means making sure that you have all the resources you need in order to do your jobs effectively. So whether it's fighting on behalf of more resources to get the bulletproof vest, most state-of-the-art bulletproof vests, which we have done, we will continue to advocate for that. And continue to, to, continue to advocate for more, an, an increase in headcount, to have more officers on the ground, uh, something that we are steadfastly behind. We do not waver as a city council, despite some of the rhetoric that you may be hearing. We are consistently and very firmly behind that call, and I know that we're working hand in hand with our commissioner to that effect, so we're hoping to see some progress in that area. And NYPD is part of the fabric of our city, and we are committed to doing our part to continue to provide that support. So thank you very much. Muchas gracias. It's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, and thank you for the work that you do. Have a good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And I think uh, as the commissioner uh, comes to address uh, his offices, uh, right now we're looking at what's happening in uh, Maryland and the violence that's taking place. Um, and if you notice, that what happened in St. Louis, uh, what's happening in Maryland, it did not happen here. And uh, what the headlines uh, would not show or do not show is because many of you were on the front line, engaging in the communities, having conversation, allowing people to uh, protest in a peaceful manner, uh, those small number of people who did not uh, act accordingly were apprehended in a very peaceful way. The city did not go through the riots of the 60s because we had a qualitative uh, community affairs unit that was proactive in dealing with making sure that people did not destroy this city. And so this, is, this, this did not become like Maryland is now and St. Louis uh, went through um, because of some of the frontline things that you did. It, it is really a, an acknowledgement of to what this, these, uh, your, your units are doing and how successful um, uh, we, we, we have been. And so uh, I want to bring to the mic 
of the police commissioner of the city of New York, my friend, Commissioner Bill Bratton. Good afternoon. It's great to look out and see all of you in this audience. A special thanks, uh, certainly, to the borough president, Eric Adams, a good friend and professional colleague of now 25 years for hosting the reception that many of you attended and certainly this award ceremony. A special thank you to the speaker. Uh, with her very busy schedule, working on the final details of the new budget to take the time to come over and be part of this event. A special thank you also to the leadership team that's represented here at the front of the room and certainly the two new Bow Chiefs up on the uh, podium, that uh, Brooklyn has always benefited from great leadership. We lost two great leaders recently, but we have two others who have now assumed the mantle to work with you, the community affairs officers of this department and of Brooklyn. I have a special affinity for this building, this neighborhood, this borough. 25 years ago this month, I was appointed as chief of the Transit Police Department and began my exposure to this great city and uh, all the good things that have happened to me professionally and I'd like to thank many of the good things that have happened to this city as a result of the great work of the NYPD and the political leadership that we've gotten to work with and certainly the men and women of the department that you represent that in many respects it began here. It began here in the subway system, the transit police at that time which was a separate department we used to hold many of our promotion ceremonies in this wonderful building that had just been renovated in 1990. And the Brooklyn of 1990, like the New York of 1990, was a very different place than the one that you serve today. Some of you have uh, experience going back to 1990. 1990, my office was right across the street at J Street. Adjacent to me was a park where the Marriott Hotel is now located. The construction of that hotel was jeopardized at that time because it was a concern that Brooklyn was not quite ready for its first hotel in generations, that it quite, hadn't quite turned the corner because the violence levels at that time, 2,243 murders, 5,000 shootings, half a million part one crimes. Was Brooklyn ready? Was New York ready? Well, over these 25 years, Brooklyn has clearly shown it's ready. And look how it has changed in those 25 years. 25 years, three and a half million subway riders back then with about 70 reported part one crimes a day. Now five and a half million every day, a lot of them here in Brooklyn, ride those subways with about five reported crimes on average. 25 years ago, I used to get my hair cut around the corner here on Shimmerhorn Street, Frank uh, the barber at the gamesman, uh, because the property values shot up so quickly. Frank got booted out, he's now on Court Street in the back of an office building. Uh, God knows what his buildings uh, sold for. He always regrets that he didn't buy the boarded up building across the street from him because when that building finally sold, it went for about $10 million. And he probably could have bought it for about 100000 back in the late 1980s. Barclays Center, the engine that's driving this bow at this time, wasn't even a dream back then. The reemergence of the Navy, uh, the reemergence of the Army base over here, all of that was not even thought of back then at that time. But it changed, Brooklyn changed, this city changed, and it changed in large part because of the dedication of the men and women of this department working to make it safe. A group that is often overlooked when we think about those efforts because we tend to think about the focus on crime, we tend to think about the focus through CompStat, IU, the community affairs officers, the face of the department to so much of the community in terms of the face that's there to listen to their problems, to work with them, so often on the front lines of demonstrations, parades, events, in those churches, in those schools, in those community meetings. The essentiality of what you do, the essentiality of putting a face, of putting a personality, of putting cops in the community who the community can see and you can see them. You've heard me talk about that at the uh, funeral eulogies for Detectives Lou and Ramos. The idea that we as a department are moving forward, we have to be willing to see, and the community has to be willing to see us. And you're on the front line of that movement and that effort. Over these next several years, the department 
the enlarged department because I'm very supportive of the speaker's efforts on her part and the, her council colleagues to increase the size of this department for the first time in now almost 14 years, because for 14 years the department has been decreasing in size. So I applaud and support those efforts. And uh, as I mentioned to you, Madam Speaker, that uh, we're looking for a little more than a thousand. So we'll, we'll give you a, we'll give you a specific number in the budget discussions as we go forward. There's issues that have been very much in the uh, papers of recent days, and uh, this might be a good opportunity to speak to that. That, as you know, I'm a very strong advocate of giving you the tools, the equipment necessary to do your jobs. And at this particular time, there is a discussion underway, and I would indicate it's a discussion. It is not a fight. It's not even a debate between the city council that the speaker leads and the police department and its leadership in the mayor's office. Discussing the tools that you need to do your job to keep the city safe, to keep getting it safer, because we've certainly done that over the last 25 years, and the concerns that many of the council members have on behalf of the many people that elected them to office, that, that some of those tools might not have been used appropriately. As we move forward, we're going to find common ground. We will collaborate together. We will find a way that you still have the tools to work with and that those tools are not abused in any way so that the citizens that the city council represents have concerns about the way we go about our business. We are going to be able to do that. And in large respect, the way we're going to do it is the way you do it, the way that you go out and establish relationships with the community so you know who they are, you know the good from the bad, and they know who you are. They know about your interest in the communities that you're serving. You are a, within a special department, a special group. And I can't thank Eric Adams enough for taking the time to acknowledge you. And hopefully he will encourage his counterparts in the other boroughs to take the time to acknowledge your counterparts in the other boroughs. Because we need you. And we need you even more at this particular time in the history of our country. There is a wound that has been opened that we thought had begun to heal and thought had healed significantly. And that wound is the issue of race, the issue of race relations. And we're going to have to double down on our efforts to ensure that as we go forward, we use the current crises in the country as an opportunity to feel challenged, to feel challenged in a way that we rise to the challenge, that we use the way we police this city as an example, a shining light for the rest of the profession to show how it in fact can be done how we can advance social justice causes without violence, that we can advance the profession of policing in a way that we are truly of the people, serving the people, rather than being seen as doing it to the people. And you were in the forefront of that movement. You have been. The very creation of the Community Affairs Office of Position way back when was to try to soften the image of the department at a time when race was also an issue of great concern and great crises. So now more than ever, we're still going to need your efforts. We're going to need to expand them. We need to expand them to every office in this department. And I'm committed to doing that as police commissioner. This council, this mayor, these borough presidents are also committed to that. We want New York to be able to show the rest of America how in the most diverse city in the world, we can all get along. We can all make it work for each other. And we will, in fact, make that happen. That is my commitment to you, to support you, to hopefully lead you appropriately. The commitment certainly that we're getting from the mayor and the council on trying to equip us with the technology, trying to equip us with some of the improved facilities we're getting to work with, trying to equip us with additional officers to ensure that there are enough of you out there to do the job. We have made this city safe and safer every year for 25 years. I believe that we can continue to do that in the new era, the new era where we have concerns of terrorism and concerns that we had not even anticipated prior to 9-11. We can do it. We can do it all. Can't do it all at the same time all the time, but we can certainly do it all a little at a time to get to where we all want to be. A city where now more than 50 percent of our members still live in the city, want to live in the city, and are committed to it because it's your families that you're protecting. It's your families who want to live here and to make a life here. We are going to do it, and we're going to do it together. So Borough President Eric Adams, who, uh, again, for 25 years, I've had the pleasure of working with Eric when he first began. Uh, when I first met him as a transit police lieutenant, then when he got promoted uh, to captain after the merger in 95, and uh, his most recent uh, movement forward as Borough President. Uh, Eric, I'm probably the only police chief and commissioner that you haven't fought with that did all that time. Excuse the expression. Eric was a bit of a pain in the ass to uh, pre <laughs> 
pre pre previous commissioners and police chiefs, but uh, as I try to do, I try to uh, effectively, uh, you know, uh, see if we can find collaboration, and, and we have. So with that, I'll close and get on to some of the awards and presentations that we're here for. But thank you for uh, uh, all that you do, and thank you for telling our story in such a great way. Yeah. All the best to you. Thank you, Commissioner Bratton. I'm going to bring, we're going to bring up each uh, borough and each precinct to uh, receive the certificate and then take a photo with the speaker, borough president, and the commissioner. I will start with Patrol Borough Brooklyn North and ask all the borough uh, community affairs officers to please come up. Brooklyn North guys, line up with you guys on the side over here. Brooklyn North, Brooklyn North, hello Brooklyn North. Line up with you guys over here in uh, numerical order. 7-5 precinct. Seven five precinct. Seven seven precinct. Seven seven precinct. Seven nine precinct. Seven seven, then seven nine. Eight one precinct. Eight three precinct. Eight four precinct.
Eight eight precinct. Nine O precinct, my favorite precinct. Nine four precinct. I know precinct. And now to patrol Borough Brooklyn South. I would like to ask all those who work in Brooklyn South in the borough to please come up, community affairs. Patrol Borough Brooklyn South. Six O Precinct. Six one precinct. Chief Rodriguez, please come up. Six one precinct. Six 
Six three precinct. Six six precinct. <laughs> Inspector Caban. Six seven precinct. Got it. 